Welcome everyone to Hex Pro Wrestling Episode 4 and our cameras have caught Ziggy Strange warming up for tonight's match in his own unique way. The Portsmouth Parkour star is set to be in six-man tag man team Hex action with the beer. Which is a six-man tag team match! And it's here to four, one four. Welcome back to the Hex Pro Wrestling Arena for six man tag team action. And here come the very first tag team. The combination of Sean Jackson and Vicious and Delicious. That's the Hitman for Hire there wearing the shades. And the self proclaimed best looking man in wrestling, Dashing at the Dash. Coming through now are their opponents. And here comes a high energy, high impact team. It's the Beards, the mighty Mad Dog Quinn and the keyboard warrior Carl Atlas with their tag team partner, the Prince of Parkour himself, Ziggy Strange. This one is gonna be a combination of hard hitting offense and high flying action. Oh, the crowd are all fired up for this one. So we ring the bell and it is showtime. We are here with Sark's Hire. Dan, you ready to call some action today? As I think I say it every single episode here at Hex Pro, we are starting with an absolute bang. This one is going to be a real mix of styles, a mixture of ground and pound, technical offense and high flying artillery. Oh, okay. Flips him off the ropes there. Into a wheelbarrow. And a... Oh, into an arm drag. Wow, okay, what a great combination of moves from Ziggy Strange there. Watching Ziggy Strange wrestle is like watching the inside of a, of a moving watch. Everything moving, nothing stops. He's an impressive character to watch in the ring and out of the ring. But, you've got to ask the question. Sometimes, like there, can you be too quick for your own good? It could be a combination of, oh dear, oh dear, inexperience. That Lariat turned it inside out. One, two, kick out at two there. Do not be deceived on how big the hitman for hire is. This man is a giant. He is intimidating and he is strong. As Ziggy Strange is finding out right now. He is the master of the spine buster. If you get hit with one of those, it is good night, Irene. Oh, beautiful spinning into Guri by Ziggy Strange tagging in the keyboard warrior Carl Atlas, a true heavyweight of British wrestling. But he's against one of the best looking and one of the most cerebral wrestlers in Hex Pro in Dashing and the Dash. Nice elbow there by Carl Atlas. Throws him into the corner. Oh, and a flurry of strikes to the midsection. Dashing out the dash, very lean. He's really slimmed down over lockdown. Carl Atlas, although he's a big guy, he moves like a cruiserweight. Yeah, do not be again deceived by the size of Carl Atlas. This guy actually quite right. Said, as we see now, he's on the second rope with a cannonball, taking down Dashing out the dash hard. And you can tell. <laughs> I think Ant is a little bit shocked from that move. Discombobulated by the high flying offense of the world's largest luchador. Tilt a whirl, oh, into a DDT, drops Carl Atlas on the crown of his head. An impressive comeback there by Dash. Now into the monkey flip, no, counter. Oh, but a palm strike right to the beard. And a oh, tornado DDT reversed into a Northern Light suplex. Does the beard offer more protection than a normal face? I really don't know. We'll have to ask after the show. Here comes a man with very strong beard game. The mighty Mad Dog Quinn. Oh, I think we're talking about beard game. Well, let's not ignore Sean Jackson there. He's growing a beard. I mean, granted, he's, a, he's trying. But come on, this guy, Sean Jackson, is not to be slept on. He is a graduate of the Red Pro Wrestling School. He is a great machine in that ring. It's Look at him, he's standing toe to toe with Mighty Mad Dog. Very, very tight collar and elbow tie up. Oh, what a big thrust. A show of dominance by the Mighty Mad Dog Quinn. I would say when it comes to power, Quinn has it over Jackson, but Jackson has the youth as well as that tenacity. Look at he is standing toe to toe. That collar and elbow tie up, they are neither of them moving. 
giving any give either way. They really are bossing heads like two bulls here. The mighty Mad Dog Quinn, he's feeling spicy today. I think he's ready for a real fight here. Oh, okay, looks like he's attempting a German suplex, but the, the sheer bulk, the sheer girth of the mighty Mad Dog Quinn. But look at that, he's gone for the go behind and he's ducking those elbows, but Quinn showing the strength, but Jackson showing his own strength there, pulling his hands back together, locking that grasp tight. A big booty bash there, oh, but a stiff strike to the side of the head. <laughs> but it looks like the mighty Mad Dog just absorbs it. They are just trading blows here, forearms straight to the side of the face, and again. These two, your, your, your description of two butting balls is very accurate, Martin. They are just going right at each other. Ducks under, oh, but goes to the eyes. Oh, really? I think it looks like Sean Jackson has found the one weak spot in the Mighty Quinn, and that is the orbital regions. And now what's he going for here? Irish whip out of the corner. It doesn't matter how big, how strong you are, your eyes are your weakest part of your body and the most open to abuse. That is what Sean Jackson does. He slowed Mad Dog down now, and he's in control. For the first time in the match, the Mad Dog is on the back foot, but holding on for dear life there. Oh, Sean with a straight right hand. I'm begging this referee to kind of call, to call some of his right hands off, but he's letting it go. Oh, the Mad Dog is feeling excited. Big slam into the corner. And here we go. Beautiful power slam. Tags in Atlas, okay. Oh, it looks like we're going for a little poetry in motion beard style. Off the ropes, rolling sent on. Referee being very favorable with his five count there. These guys have five seconds to get in and out of the ring and this has been longer than five. If I was the team of Vicious and Delicious, I'd be incredibly annoyed. Oh, we've seen this before. Oh, the Hex Pro ring is just a torture device. Here comes, oh, kicking his own partner in the back. I'm begging for this official to get control of this oh, match. And again. How is this fair? Okay, legal tag. In comes Ziggy Strange. Oh, now we're applauding the legal tag. Great, excellent. Sean Jackson has really taken some punishment in the corner there. Off the middle, oh, but get kicked square in the face. Talk about giving punishment. A releasing suplex, and in comes Dashing and the Dash. This is a sensible move here. We've got to cover. Kick out at two. Sensible move by the team of Vicious Delicious and Jackson. They've slowed the match down, got the leaner. Sharper at the dash in. Now doing their own tag team maneuvers between them and the Hitman. Now, of course, Vicious and Delicious are some of the most decorated wrestlers in the UK today. They are tag team champions across the country. And it is moves like this that show that they are a force to be reckoned with. They most certainly are. And they are dominating here, showing uh, Ziggy Strange exactly what tag team wrestling is all about. Again, a nice quick tag. In comes Sean Jackson, the powerhouse. Big boot to the midsection. And look, in and out within the five count. The, the mighty Mad Dog is not happy with what he is seeing. The referee is keeping him at bay. But look at what's going on behind the referee's back here. But if the referee can't see it and doesn't call it, it's not illegal. Oh, the crowd are not happy with the actions of Vicious, Delicious and Jackson. But the crowd were happy when it was happening to Sean Jackson, when he was well, getting triple teamed. They, they, they have their favourites, they always will. And now the boot right up under the jaw, the referee counting because it is an illegal hold that close to the ropes. Oh, oh that, so, something appears to be wrong with the boot, the knee. We could have an injury here. Oh, I think it's just subdiffused. Look at what's going on behind the referee's back. The referee is checking on out the dash. He's clearly injured. We've got to make sure he's right so the match can continue properly. He is fine. He's back up and he's back in control. Okay. What we should be talking about and applauding is how well the team have neutralised Ziggy Strange's high flying ability. They've kept him on the map. That guy means that he cannot 
bounce off the ropes, jump off the top rope and use his parkour techniques to win this match. Great plans by the team of Vicious Delicious and Jackson. It may be difficult to see on the camera, but with this six-sided ring, the distance from corner to corner is such a long way. So really, Ziggy Strange has to fight extra hard to make that tag to bring in either Mad Dog or Atlas. Ducks under, off the ropes. What's this gonna be? Everybody, oh, it was. It was a double team net breaker. One, two, and a kick out at two. That was so close there. I'm sure the team of Vicious Delicious had that then, but look, they're dragging him back in the corner like a bear drags its prey back into its cave. It's just Tag Team Wrestling 101. Cut the ring in half. Do not let your opponent tag in their partner. Now, Sean Jackson standing over his prey. What's he going to go for here? Hooking the neck. Which means straight right hand. It's also very impressive how Sean Jackson has linked in with Vicious and Delicious. These guys don't normally team together. This is one of the first times I believe they've teamed. And they are working together like a cohesive unit. It's very impressive. Look at that, distracting the referee while Sean gets a few kicks in. Oh dear, oh dear. A combination camel clutch and a stomp. Again, the referee can't see it. You can't call it. It's not illegal. I think the problem is the beards are just getting a little too hot-headed on the apron there. They need to get cooler heads and just cheer their tag team partner. Just call him into the corner. The problem is if they come into the ropes, it is an illegal manoeuvre and the ref does have to keep track of that. But what is going on here? The double team choke by the beards spilling Vicious and Delicious out of the floor. That was needed to happen because I do feel that Ziggy Strange was running out of time there. Sean Jackson's out, but the entire tag team is now out on the floor. Could this be an opportunity for Ziggy to pull a comeback? Over the top. Ducks the attack. Oh, and a flipping dive to the outside. Ziggy Strange there looked like he just levelled up. But what the beards are what, what they're not thinking, what I think they're thinking. Oh, we have seen high-flying offence from men of this stature, but is that the Mad Dog? Oh, fakes them out, fakes them out, but there's still a lot of man to come crashing down with a double axe hand on. That's a big man coming off that ring apron. What is Atlas thinking here? Come on, this referee needs to get control of this match. This is getting silly. We, we have seen inziguris, we've seen high flying offense, we have seen springboard maneuvers. Atlas can pull it all off. What's he going to go for here? It's a moonsault inside out. And he landed on his feet. Unbelievable. Agility of a cat from a man the size of a tiger. Hey, that's no catch. Now pulling, pushing back in. Oh, hello. What is the general manager Steve Luther doing here? And what is he doing with the Hex Pro purple briefcase? Spine buster off the top rope. I would argue that he, he's doing what everyone wants because he is our general manager. Well, we know in the past, oh, big catch here. What are we going to go for? Big spiralling slam. There we go, the catatonic by Mad Dog Quinn. We have seen that Vicious and Delicious have been working behind the scenes in cahoots with Steve Luther. I, I think. Oh, a beautiful cutter by dashing out the dash. We're going to roll up here by Ziggy into the stop. Finally, we see Ziggy Strange getting back the zone but cut off by Sean Jackson. This referee has lost all control of this match. I've lost control. Who is the legal man here at mine? I honestly don't know but slammed down for a very very strong impact. Steve Luther still there in the background just keeping an eye on his charges. Well, why not? He is the general manager. He's every right to be out here for every match if he wants to. What worries me is this whole you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours thing. Maybe there's some sort of plot, some sort of ploy hatching. And you are just a conspiracy theorist. Well, I'm just giving you black helicopters, gra glassy holes. Come on, Martin, this is wrestling. We don't have conspiracies and back scratching here. Okay, Sean Jackson ducks, but gets hit with a big old slap and a diving clothesline by the master of the lariat, the mighty Mad Dog Quinn. I'm just going to keep my eye on Steve Luther and try and call the action as we see it. Our oh, Mad Dog needs to be keeping his eye in the ring instead of out of the oh, ring. Double Yakuza kick in the corner. 
Atlas again taking a pounding into the turnbuckle himself. Oh, here we go, double Irish whip. But, oh, he misses the moonsault. Hooks with the cutter. Slice bread number two, oh, into the knees. Wow, that is down. Uh, I, I think at the dash is, is, is injured there as well. He's holding his face. Oh, could be a broken nose. Referee is checking on him. Hitman is also checking on him as well to make sure his partner's going. But Hit Hitman is dazed himself. Everybody looks very... Oh, but what is going on? Cleaning the clock of both members of the Beards. A diving attack with the purple briefcase. I guess Steve Luther there showing that he is a hands-on general manager. Siggy Strange flipping crossbody. Takes down both members of Vicious and Delicious. Sean Jackson's back to his feet. Spins him around, big right hand. Ziggy Strange here, it's basically three on one now. Sean Jackson, oh, reversal. Series of strikes. But a big boot by the Hitman for Hire. Oh, a downward spiral drops him right on the crown of his head. One, two, three, and it is a win for Vicious, Delicious, and Sean Jackson. It may be in a six-man tag, but I think the fourth man in that team was Luther. I don't think Mad Dog's going to give Luther the chance to not get in the ring. Hang on, Carl, you can't do that! Olympic slam! That's our general manager! Oh, Mad Dog is holding in place. Atlas is going up top. It's going to be huge! How are you endorsing this? How about this? You want to stick your ring? Me and you, next time we're here, yeah. in a tables match. Yeah. And now we're heading backstage to Danny Duggan. It was only a matter of time before Danny Duggan came here to Hex Pro, one of the hottest new rising promotions down here in the South. Brimming full of some of the greatest up and coming talent and talent that's been here for a very, very long time. Now, if you know me, you know that everything about me is about the spirit of competition, the spirit of the fight, and bringing out the very best in not just other people, but myself. So I'm very excited to see who Hexpro has for me tonight, and I hope they bring that spirit. I hope they bring that competition. I hope they bring that fight. Because I've got a lot of heart, and I'm ready to show it down here in self. Well, all in common is a tag team match! Hey. Hey. I'll be going first, it's the first team. So here we go, the main event of this episode is an all-star tag team match. Making their way to the ring with Steve Luther. There we have his protege, his hard-hitting bruiser, Samuel Jacobs, and arguably one of the greatest wrestlers in the world today, international superstar, Hollywood movie star, the Prince of Mumbai, Rishi Ghosh. We are in the presence of true wrestling royalty. And they're going to have a very tough night as they face the team of the hybrid Kelly Six and making his return to the South Coast wrestling scene, The Bruce. This man was an absolute mainstay of British wrestling down in the Southampton Portsmouth area for many years. It's wonderful to have him back on the South Coast wrestling scene. Kelly Six himself has completely reinvented himself for probably the 15th time, really gaining some heavyweight credentials. Okay, we're ringing the bell and it's tag team time. And this match is starting, a bit like the last match, ended in an absolute brawl. I don't think the referee's actually officially started the match yet. Well, I definitely don't know who's the legal man, that's for sure. Oh, the bruiser with a very, very stiff open palm strike onto Kelly Six. Both men in. Oh, a little dosy do action. Ho oh, ho! What a meeting of the minds in the middle of the ring. 
That is some of the hard hitting high flying action you're going to see here tonight, especially from the likes of the Bruce and Kelly Six. Irish rip off the ropes. Oh, low drop kick takes down the Prince and a drop kick to the uh, sorry, a leg drop to the back of the neck. One, two, and a kick out at two. I think we finally. I think restored we're some semblance of order in this match. We're officially underway by the looks of it, if nothing else. The Prince gets Irish whip up the ropes, double back elbows, rolling the Prince through. The Bruce going up. Big crossbody takes down the Prince of Mumbai. And a kick out at two. The Bruce there showing none of the ring rust that you might have alluded to earlier, Martin. This is the Bruce's return to in-ring competition here in the South. He's taken a bit of hiatus um, to deal with some personal stuff and he is back and looking in amazing shape. And some fantastic tattoos as well. Yeah, way too much time in the tattoo chair, some would say, but he is back and Kelly Six. Oh, dear, oh dear. A rare misstep there by Kelly. And a German suplex out of the corner drops him high on the back of his neck. Hooks the leg. Kick out at two. Now that all four of these men know each other very well. Fun fact for you, Martin. All four of these men, in fact, all five of you include Steve Luther, were it on my very first ever wrestling show that I worked over nine years ago now. And all these guys have changed, developed, and evolved since then. But especially what I want to draw attention to is the evolution of the bruiser, Samuel Jacobs. This guy is an absolute machine. He has dropped a lot of weight in the last year, got absolutely shredded, and I think this is his time. He's been one of those sleeper wrestlers, one of those dark horses of British wrestling. It's time to let that horse out of the paddock and let him run free. And he is, and what better tag team partner could he have tonight than the Prince of Mumbai? This gentleman is a world-renowned wrestler. He has been everywhere. More importantly, he's a real cerebral veteran of the ring. They talk about knowing every trick in the book. The Prince of Mumbai has literally written the book and is on its second printing. Kick out at two. Talking about evolution, Kelly Six himself has gone from being a cruiserweight wrestler to a genuine heavyweight over the last couple of years. He's uh, likened himself to a, a British Samoa Joe and uh, with his ring gear, he certainly has that kind of visual look. But even though he has gained some heavyweight offense, he still maintains that high-flying style when he needs to pull it out of the bag. It's an interesting mix with, uh, you get with Kelly Six. As you quite right said, a lot of parallels can be drawn between him and Carl Atlas, who we mentioned who we talked about earlier. The bigger size, but still got that explosive offense when they need it. And at the moment, he needs it. All manages to roll through and tag in the Bruce. The Bruce comes through with a hard clothesline, takes down the Bruiser. Sending him in the corner. It's a big stinger splash there. And for the first time, the Bruiser appears to be on the back foot. Here we go. Big, hard, full body slam in the centre of the ring. Oh, are we going to see? Moonsault, standing moonsault, picture perfect by the Bruce. That is impressive for a gentleman his size. Both men are down in the centre. What are we going to see from the Bruce here? Are they both going to take the impact? Oh, once again, a standing moonsault and a pin. Both men kick out at two. I don't know what the ref was looking at there. He was looking at Rishi, he was looking at his feet. Come on, referee, get it together. Let's get this match under control. One in, one out. Bruce manages to reverse. Reversal by the Bruce. Oh, what a big, illegal right strike by the Prince of Mumbai. Oh, and rolling through, going for a second German suplex. Hits the second. Can he make it the trifecta? Third. Oh, manages to bridge two. Kick out at two. Great show of resilience by the Bruce. All three of those German suplexes were high impact, high and tight on the back of the neck of the Bruce. I am very surprised that the Bruce kicked out there. And you can tell, look at the pain's in now. He is on the ropes in the corner. Steve Luther putting his beady eyes in on the action there. I'm sure he's just whispering some sweet nothings to him. Yes, it does worry me that... Uh, Oh, we see that sort of thing going on from Steve Luther. More dastardly devious behaviour. Speaking of devious, the Prince of Mumbai is getting a few licks in as well. 
The Prince of Mumbai seems to be very happy with himself. There appears to have been a tag somewhere there. Well, I think the ref heard it. As long as the ref hears it, apparently that's all the ballots. Big clothesline by the Prince of Mumbai. Declaring himself a victor even at this early stage of the match. There you go, there's your tag. That, that looks a very legal tag to me. In comes the bruiser. Are we going to see some double team offense? Yep, looks like a... What is going on here? Are they going for like some sort of double crucifix bomb out of the corner? This just looks painful. The bruise getting out of it, thankfully for him. Ducks under. Hooks them both. Are we going to see a double DDT? Plants both of the wrestlers on the tops of their heads. That's one of the problems with these double team maneuvers. They're great when they work, but when they get countered, you can take the whole team out. And there's only one man now standing tall, and that's Kelly Six. And Kelly Six is getting this crowd worked up into a frenzy, trying to get some energy, but it looks like the hooks are in. We got the tag. There we go. Manages to break free from the grasp of the bruiser. The bruiser goes down. The Prince of Mumbai goes down. Kelly Six is a house of fire here. Oh, but more devious behaviour. More behind the back action. Oh, we got hooks through. Oh, beautiful T-bone suplex there. Impressive throw there by Kelly Six. They're again, pandering to the crowd. You need to get on the bruiser. You could not give him time to recuperate. Because as you say, we do have the Prince of Mumbai at ringside starting to shake off the cobwebs, but Luther is there. That potential third man of the team, always ready to just stick his claw in where it's needed. All this time we go for an Alabama slam here. A spinning Alabama slam. Oh, face first. Adding insult to injury with the dizziness and the impact. Oh, a power bomb right to the back of the bruiser. Who's the legal man? And a kick out at two. Kelly Six and the bruiser are legal, managing to get a rope break there. The Prince of Mumbai has been used as a weapon, but he is not the legal man. That's one of the bonuses to you as a, an opponent when you're in this six-sided ring. Because of the way the ropes are laid out, it is a little bit easier to get those rope breaks. Which means you've got to be thinking when you go for the pinfall, is your opponent far enough away from the ropes? Okay, Kelly Six backed off and a legal tag. In comes the Prince of Mumbai. Oh, manages to duck, but close. Oh, he hits his own partner. Miscommunication there. Series of stiff strips, stiff kicks by. Kelly Six, try saying that five times fast. Right, easy for you to say. Kelly now going to up top. But... Bombay oh, bicycle kick! Yeah. Out of nowhere! Yeah. Kelly, it's tough though. Yeah. Hooks him up. Oh, a T-bone from the top rope. Yeah. What a way to come down. The Prince of Mumbai says he's finished. Let's see, one, two, kick out at two. The Bruce there, just only you see in the, in the corner of your screen, he's just crawling back in to the ring, trying to get be there for the tag to carry. But in all honesty, he doesn't look like he's got any energy himself. The two people standing tall are the Bruiser and the Prince of Mumbai. Oh, come on, referee. Letting the Bruiser in, he didn't even make a tag. And the referee's lost all control. Six tags in the Bruce. Hooks him. Huge or a nuggy slam. One, two, kick out at two. The referee not quite on the ball there. I think that the, ref, the Bruce will be having words with that referee after the match because I think he probably cost him the match there. And he did have to make sure that Kelly Six was out of the ring before making the legal count. Kelly Six hooks the Prince in a full Nelson. Dear, the Bruce dropped on the top rope. What dastardly... Oh, behaviour is going on. Big overhand chop by the Bruiser. That not only felt painful, it sounded painful. Okay, looks like they're going once again for that double crucifix bomb. In the corner. Oh, big crucifix bomb. Oh, come on, referee. They can't double tip. Oh! Big save of the day by the Bruce. And everybody is down. Everyone's down apart from the referee. And I think he, no one has got a clue who the legal man is. 
What is going on? Even Steve Looper is telling him what to do. I think Looper should referee this match. That will make more sense. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he is wearing a blazer. Maybe he's got a striped shirt on underneath there. He would be totally impartial as well. Okay, all four men are up to their knees. A series of strikes. The referee's got to decide who's in, who's out here. To be honest, all four men look out on their feet, throwing these punches and slaps and chops. Oh, big overhand chops. Oh, my word. Oh, double into Gurries. That was impressive. They made it attack each other's own feet. The Prince is down. The Bruiser is down. The Bruce is going to the top rope. Kenny Six is going to the top rope. What are we going to see here? Oh, manages to reverse it. Into a Boston Crab. A pair of Boston Crabs. Double submission potential here. Referee is right there. Ready to hear one of the guys say I quit or tap out. Kelly Six is grabbing the Bruce. They're saying don't let the tag. Oh, both men kicked off. Drop toe holds. Hooks. Double cross face. And now the roles have reversed. Can the Bruiser and the Prince of Mumbai fight through this? Oh, Luther pulls the referee to the outside. Doesn't see the tap out. I hate to say it, but I told you so. Luther would make a much better referee. That is blatantly disrespectful to the referee, pulling him to the outside. The referee, he, he hit his head on the floor. Luther would just want to have a chat with him and explain about the rules, about how it's the only one man from each team in the stop? ring. The referee is not practically unconscious. Oh, but... Now that should be a disqualification. The Bruiser took out Luther. Spinning slam by Kelly Six. Can we get some medical people out the Bruce to the top. Big splash from the top. Piling them up. One, two, three. And a win for the Bruce and Kelly Six. An incredible victory against all odds from all that outside interference. A victory for the hybrid at the Bruce. Thank you for joining us for episode four. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to check out Hex Pro Wrestling's social media for announcements about our next live events. We'll see you very soon with more wrestling action.